Hello, America. Welcome to Western Kentucky University and today's edition of Accounting for Decision Makers. How are y'all? You excited to be here? You don't look very excited. You already who here is already looking forward to spring break? Liar, liar, pants on fire. Like no, anybody, basically anybody whose hands not raised, I, I, I begin to wonder, you know what I mean? So how long is it until spring break? Too long. How, that's too long. <laughs> like it's gonna be a whole four more days. Actually, at this point, it's not even four whole days, is it? It's like three and a half. So, yeah, I mean, I am too, I have to say. I'm going to try and get some bicycling done. Uh, I am, ooh, oops, I just moved it when I didn't mean to. I am, and I know this because I'm an accountant, I am 0.1 miles away from riding 100 miles this year. Like 0.1, it's like, that's like the length of the building, I think. You know, something, you know, it's just... You know, I'm just that close to having a, you know, being at the 100 mile mark of bicycling this year. So that was, that is fun. I mean, I did 16 miles yesterday and I did 10 miles the day before that. So it's like two of my three longest days of the year back to back. So I'm feeling, if I'm louder, it's just because my lungs are getting more fit, you know. Because I, I mean, that's what students tell me is I'm a little too quiet. So I need to work on that. Uh, I mean, th that's what students say. So what page in the handy handbook should you be on? And I'm gonna need to, I'm gonna gander at this. How do units cost behave? What is the goal of a business? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I will, I will just periodically come and look at you and look at you all to make sure I'm, my notes are lining up with you all. <clears throat> and, and just in case I'm not going to talk about some stuff too, I can tell you what I'm not gonna talk about. What page is that that you were on? 117, everybody. Page 117. Okay. Ooh. Page 117. Oh, let me take roll. Sorry, sorry. I should do that here. Uh, Joseph Baker, you are here. Landon Brown. No Landon. Ryan Cheney? No Ryan. Blaine, Christian? No Blaine. No Blaine, okay. Caden Crawford, welcome back, sir. Ian Dambrovitz, feeling kind of lonely. Peyton Dial, thank you, sir, for the big hand. Nate Edgeworth. Sarai, in turquoise, Grace, in orange, the colorful people are alphabetically right next to each other. Uh, Connor Gillespie. Ellen Grayson. No, Ellen. Skyla Harden. Thank you. Gatlin Harris. And so you didn't do the practice exam? Okay. Did you raise your hand? Did you? Okay. Okay. Jackson Hyatt. Danny Mangione. Thank you. Kenzie, welcome back to you. Corey McDonald. Lane Mudd, and welcome back to you as well. Hermes, <coughs> should kind of kind of be patient before you complain. Cam Pendleton, not here. Say, are you here? Thank you. Hayden Robertson, no Hayden. Olivia. Are you here? Is that energy work drink working for you? No. No? You want need to take another sip? No. You no? Know? Sailor. Not here, man. He abandoned you. Stella. Yeah. You are here though. You're a good friend. Carson. Not here. Too bad. Jaron. A lot of people missing. Emma Taylor. Thank you. Welcome back to you, though. Were you here the class period before the exam? Yeah, welcome back. Blake Thompson. Good to see you, man. You're always here. Appreciate you. August. 
You could be here a little more. <laughs> Veronica. And last but not least, Maxton. And welcome back to you as well, because you weren't here in the class period before the exam either. So come to class, everybody. If you want good grades, that sometimes helps. Maybe not in all your classes, but hopefully in this one. Um, so let us talk about, well, uh, uh, this, now I've got to be careful here about who's here. Emma, what's the goal of a business? What do you think? If you were to start a business, why would you do that? To make money. And I'm going to just change one word, make a profit, right? Make a profit. Uh, that's why you start a business, isn't it? Isn't that the goal of a business, to make a profit, to make money? Um, now, you will hear people saying, yeah, businesses should do good in society and contribute computers to schools and, you know, that sort of thing. However, in order to do all those good things, that company must first be making money. There was a point in time in history when a company called Enron, anybody heard of Enron? Nobody's heard of Enron. Enron is a very, very, I'm glad I asked this question, very, very famous company for its unethical behaviors, unethical behaviors to the point that the company died. Okay? Which is good, which is the necessary background for the story because Enron was based in Houston, Texas, and for a while was the single largest contributor, financial contributor, to the Houston Symphony Orchestra. But the last check that Enron wrote to the Houston Symphony Orchestra bounced because they went out of business. And so they behaved very unethically, criminally. And uh, they went out of business. And so those, a business must be in business successfully and appropriately run before it can do good things in the community and in society. Okay? Let's look at the next, uh, let's look, continue to look at the page. You're in the front, so pardon me, I'm going to look at you. CVP, let's, let's talk about what CVP stands for. CVP stands for Cost, Volume, Profit Analysis. CVP stands for Cost, Volume, Profit Analysis. And I need to do some art on the board, so um, you all get ready, okay? So in that space, we're going to have two of these. August, if you were to see one of these or two of these on the playground, what would you call them? Teeter, -totter. Teeter -totter, I love you. Jaren, what would you call them? Is Jaren here, Jaren Stites? Maybe not. Nope, Jen starts here. Veronica, what would you call? Seesaw. Seesaw. Maxton? Seesaw. Joseph? Would you call, it's called a seesaw? You ever been on one? Yeah? See, so you and I, we're in the minority. And I knew that I've, I've asked this question of many, many students, and we are in the minority, unfortunately. But I'm a teeter-totter kind of person. But I, and I just want to remind you, you know, do you know who has the most fun? Who here has ever been on a teeter-totter or a seesaw? Wow, most of you. You have not. It's okay. It's okay. Um, have you ever seen one, like, when you were growing up, in, a, like, a playground? No? So it's where you have a little kid on both sides, and you just go up and down? And so you can find where, if, if say wanted to see one here in Bowling Green, where could he go? Is there, is there a, is there a teeter-totter in Bowling Green? Like if you, where? There's a school on campus, do they have teeter-totters? Downtown Bowling Green? By Hot Rod Stadium. 
So if you look around, maybe you can see one. Just, you know, just, just, just because. Now, you know who has the most fun on the teeter-totter, right? The fat kid. <laughs> Why? Because, speaking from personal experience, my little brother's feet touch the ground only when I let them. Total, the, the, the fat kid has total control. Like, he, he only has fun if I let him. Right? And so, that's kind of fun. N not impressed. <laughs> Do you have a bigger brother? I have an older brother. The older brother, was he, was he mean to you like this? No, we never had to talk. Oh, yeah. gotcha. Okay. So, we're going to talk about two things here, everybody. We're going to talk about... So we've got two teeter-totters on the board for a reason. We're going to talk about revenue, and we're going to talk about expenses. What times what? What times what equals total revenue? Blaine, uh, Blaine's not here. Blaine is not here. Caden, what times what do you think equals revenue? <coughs> Just think about it. Like, you're in the business of selling Western Kentucky University Hilltopper shirts. Like, that shirt that you're wearing. Price times how many units you sell? Precisely correct. This isn't rocket science, right? I'm going to give them slightly different words, but that's exactly right. In fact, I'm going to call it... You, uh, just a little more precisely, I'm going to call it selling price per unit times uh, volume, or the number of units you sell, right? What times what equals revenue? So this isn't rocket science. It's not rocket science at all. It's, it's how many units you sell times selling price per unit. The trick, though, is this. How do you set a, how do you set a selling price? How easy is it to set a selling price? Um, how many people, yes ma'am, volume, it's not a very good O is it, shall I erase that for posterity's sake, V O L, does that look a little better, let's look at it through the camera, there it's looking, I got it almost centered in the camera. That's kind of where the, the camera is. Hello, camera. Is the camera in your way? Uh-uh. Yes, okay. Ian. Talk to me, man. You feel, you feeling lonely? A little bit. A little bit. So uh, have you had an economics class before? Yeah? You have had an economics? Did you have an economics? So last semester you had an economics Micro. class? Micro. Perfect. Perfect. How many people have taken micro? Awesome. 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 So in micro, so when you're talking, so in micro, what would you expect to have happen if a company increases the selling price? What would happen to volume? If you, and you can just kind of think about this commonsensically, right? Decrease. Okay. So if you increase the selling price, the volume sold decreases, doesn't it? And does the opposite also happen? Stereotypically, if you lower the selling price, then you're going to sell more units. I mean, there are some exceptions to that. For example, I've heard of one example of a company raising the prices of its purses, and then they sold more. So that sort of thing does happen, but it's a little unusual, isn't it? And so now you can see this is what a teeter-totter does. It goes up and down like this. And you can see <coughs> this, is, this is an issue. So what selling price should we sell things for? Like those shirts, should we sell those shirts for five cents a piece? We'd sell a lot of them, wouldn't we? But why would that be bad? You're yeah, you're not making money. But we could also sell them, well, let's sell them for $1,000 a piece then. Would that be a good idea? Also not a good idea. Why? Because then nobody's going to buy them. 
Who wants a thousand dollar shirt? So the goal here is to right maximize we want to maximize revenue, but it's not necessarily very easy. It's not necessarily very easy to maximize revenue because we've got to kind of balance this teeter-totter. Okay. Expenses. Now, expenses is going to be a plus instead of a multiplication sign. Now, using terms that I have given you this semester, Using terms that I've given you this semester, Sarai, do you think you could come up with a what plus what equals total expenses? So this should be from your notes really early in the semester, like second, first, second, third day of class. Are you looking? Because what if Sarai doesn't know the answer? You're mathematically next. Okay. You should look. Very close to the beginning. What plus what equals total expenses? Huh. Uh, actually, this it's probably, uh, maybe I'm lying. It's the beginning of managerial, probably. There we are. Let's be, be more precise. Sorry, I forget about that whole financial accounting part at the beginning of the semester. So it's at the beginning of, what page are you on? Yeah, keep, uh, Keep going, keep going. Where's managerial? Keep going past financial to managerial. There we are, there we are. Let's keep going, keep a rocking and rolling. There we are, Let's keep going. Couple. So what page is this? Uh, 91. 91, keep going, keep going. Here we are, there we are, ah, there we are. Page 100, right? 99 and 100, so I lied. I totally missed, sorry about that, I totally missed misinformed you, misdirected you. Let's get everybody to roughly page 99 and 100. Are you, you're not already thinking about spring break, are you? I've been thinking about spring break all week. Man. Uh, focus, man. I am. I'm focused on it. Well, you were playing with your phone, though. That's no, not focus. No, 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 no. See? See? Was it? Yeah. Okay. Hot text? Yeah. Hot text? Ooh, not hot, not hot at all. So, Sarai, does that help you any? Basically, to answer the question, you've got a 50-50 chance if you're looking at, the, and I think there's a right and a wrong, kind of a, a more right answer, let me put it that way. What plus what equals total expenses? Uh, 99 and 100. Go back one more. There, that one, and the, or the page before, and the page before. Okay. Your answer is on one of those two pages. Hmm. Kind of low effort art. What do you think, man? No clue. Huh? About the answer to my question. I no, clue. no clue. You're looking at two answers, right? Aren't you looking at two answers? Page, what page are you on? Oh, I was A hundred. Ninety-nine to hundred. There we are. What's the answer to the question? Sarah, what do you think? Huh? This happens to be the answer to the question. Yes. Yeah, so, I, so maybe, maybe it wasn't obvious to you. So on page 99, we've got variable costs and fixed costs. If you add those two together, you have total cost or total expenses. The, actually, there's two correct possible correct answers. If you add product costs and period costs together, you also get total expenses or total cost. So there's actually, the way I ask the question, there's actually two correct answers. I happen to be fishing for one of them, which is variable cost plus fixed cost equals total expenses okay variable cost plus fixed cost equals total expenses and so so I'm glad again this is one of the you know I know it sometimes um, feels not fun when Dr. Fessler's interacting with you you think he's on his phone you on your phone 
Yes. Huh? No, but you were just a second ago. Yeah. And so, focus, everybody. Focus. But we are, but uh, variable costs plus fixed costs add up to total costs or total expenses. Okay? But, and this can do the exact same thing where, like here in the United States, very often in production facilities, production facilities are replacing people with machines. Okay? That is this, everybody. That is increasing a fixed cost and decreasing a variable cost. Right? Okay? But the alternative can happen. So that's very easy to see. The alternative can happen, though, where they replace machines with people. John, or not John Deere, but Harley Davidson at one point in time did this, where they had this conveyor belt, big thing in the, along the ceiling of the production facility that they used to move parts around the plant, and they decided that wasn't flexible enough for them, and so instead what they did was they handmade these carts out of wood, lined it with carpet, and ran those, and, and just had people moving parts around the factory. And so you can replace people with machines, or how would I, uh, let me say that better, right? You can replace, use machines to replace people, but you can also use people to replace machines. And so, again, we got a teeter-totter. And here we want to minimize expenses, right? Well, here we want to minimize expenses. So if you maximize revenue and minimize expenses, that kind of increases the likelihood that you're going to make money. And... Uh, that's what we're going to learn how to use CVP for. So CVP, again, stands for what? Uh, Peyton? Cross volume and profit. And then another word that we can use to describe CVP is break even. Break even. And which is actually a better word, like a more understandable word, right? CVP stands for cost, volume, profit analysis. We can also describe it as break-even, which is the condition of revenues equaling expenses. So break-even means we are making no money, making no money. And so that is the idea of break-even. Not the, not, not the perfect situation for a business, but mathematically a useful one. And then la one last thing is I want you all to recognize that there's volume on both teeter-totters, right? It's here, and it's here in the calculation of total variable cost. So total variable cost can be calculated as variable cost per unit, VCU is variable cost per unit, times volume. And so there's actually volume on both sides of this teeter-totter, which is uh, very useful to see. Okay, questions, comments, concerns, random thoughts. Piece of cake, walk in the park, easiest one off a log. Let's look on the next page then. Okay. So keep your finger kind of on page 99 and 100. We're still going to be talking more about that kind of information now. So it is in total on top, right? In total on top. And per unit about halfway down the page. We're going to draw four graphs. And they all have the same labels dollars and volume dollars volume dollars volume dollars volume okay okay Can 
do it in color. You like that? Mm -hmm. I like color. So Grace, what is the definition of a fixed cost? Yeah, it's a cost that remains the same regardless of the number of units produced, okay? Which is the word you're using, the word level. So fixed costs remain the same regardless of the number of units produced. So what would the graph then of fixed costs, what would that look like? Nate. Nate here. Did Nate leave? Doggone him, right, Connor, on you. What would the straight line, which direction? If it remains the same regardless of the number of units produced, where would it start, that upward sloping line? Yeah, fixed costs, actually, are perfectly horizontal, right? So, because if you recall the example that I gave during class, we were making, using a sewing machine to make these shirts, right? Do you remember how much we were spending on the sewing machine? Uh, 100? It was $100. So if we make one shirt with that sewing machine, how much are we going to spend on the sewing machine? If we make five shirts? 10 shirts. 50 shirts. That's what that graph looks like, okay? Questions, comments, concerns? What? Is it really interesting? Yeah. Do you want to do variable costs? I mean, kind of teamwork makes the dream work? What would variable costs be? You, kind of that table. You, that table can answer. And where would it start? Which is kind of. At the bottom? Yeah. So, variable costs. Is, and that's exactly right. It starts at the origin, right? It starts at zero, zero. That is variable cost, okay? Variable cost starts at zero, zero. Because what is the definition of a variable cost? Blake. So if we make zero units, how much cost would we incur? Zero is the correct answer. And so that's what that graph is describing, right? That's what that graph is describing is cost zero, zero. So they're quite different, aren't they? And so let us do, again, fixed costs, variable costs now on a per unit basis because I talked about those. How did I define variable costs on a per unit basis? Gatlin. How did I define fixed costs on a per unit basis? Should be on page 110. If you got it, let me see your notes on page 110. Where's your handy handbook? Uh, no, you don't know. Do you have one? No. Did you ever get one? Have you been contacted by the bookstore? No, I need to, I need to, get, I need to go get it. Have you paid for it? So you've paid for it. So, so let me understand this. So you've paid for it and not gone and collected it. Yeah. I mean, this has been working, though. It's been working. Did you get a perfect score on the last exam? Like 92. But it's not a perfect score. You think that was the answer? Maybe. 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 So p uh, variable costs on a per unit basis. Do you have it written down? Yes, sir. What's it say? Ah, fixed costs on a per unit basis. The, uh, really, what I did was I went in air quotes, didn't I? I said, fixed costs on a per unit basis vary, right? And what was the example I did? What was the example I did? The example was, again, $100, per, $100 on the sewing machine, right? $100 on the sewing machine. If we make one shirt with that sewing machine, what is the cost per shirt, Jackson? $100 for the sewing machine, and I said, how many shirts are we making? One. One, so what's the cost per shirt of that sewing machine? Uh, so I was, uh, I was what? I was just, I knew I was next, and then I didn't. You knew you were next, and so I thought, thought it would be time for a quick nap. 
Oh, good. Kenzie, if we make one shirt, sewing machine, what's the cost per, per, per shirt? Per shirt, yes. 100 divided by one. What's 100 divided by one? 100. What's 100 divided by two? What's 100 divided by five? 20. See, you got this. You're all over this, like a carpet on, you know, carpet on the floor. You got it covered. And uh, so fixed costs on a per unit basis vary. And they actually vary in a shape that looks like that. And you can kind of graph it, Jackson. Are you looking forward to your uh, spring break already? Uh, I'll be honest with you, I am looking forward to spring break. Oh, man. And then it'll be over before you know it. <laughs> and then you'll be stuck here. Then you'll be stuck here. Uh, Danny is here. Danny, hey, talk to me, man. Variable costs on a per unit basis. Tell me about those. Huh? They remain the same. So the example I gave you all was the shirts. How much were we spending on cloth for shirts? Corey, how much? Four dollars. So how much do we spend, Danny, on the first shirt that we make for cloth? Just for cloth. How much for the second shirt? Huh? For the second shirt. You just said it. Four dollars, yes. So how much for the first shirt, Danny? Back at you. $4. How much for the second shirt? $4. How about for the fifth shirt? $4. How about the tenth shirt? $4. You notice a pattern. Anybody notice a pattern? You notice a pattern? And so very good. That's what that's gonna look like. Variable cost on a per unit basis is a have you seen graphs like this before? High school, college, one of your classes, something like that? Nate, I got to ask you a couple of questions, I think, because you stepped out and then, and then your card came up. Uh, questions, comments, concerns, random thoughts. Piece of cake, walk in the park, easy as falling off a log, okay? Let's see what your next page looks like. We're gonna, so it's page 119, we're skipping. Can, can put an X through page 119, okay? So I'm not gonna, <laughs> not a, not, it's not a very big X. I mean, you can be enthusiastic, like, Big X, thank God. We're not learning it. We don't have to know anything. Okay, let's move on. What kind of cost is this then? Um, let's draw a graph. So that's what page we're on. What kind of cost is this? It's in total dollars, volume. And it looks like that. Let's get that on the screen for our uh, home viewing audience. Ah, it's already on the screen. I'm going to put it a little more closer to center. Nate, you're on, man. You're on. What kind of cost is that? Why do you think it's a variable cost? Sir? It, slanting up. However, is there a way in which it does not look like a variable cost? It goes horizontal a little bit. Kind of taking a nap, kind of going horizontal. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the more fancy way to say that, right, is that it doesn't start at the origin. Right. So it, let's use green. I don't know for whatever reason I tend to use green for this line. So it's actually a total cost line because it is a Variable cost line stacked on top of a fixed cost line, right? Total cost line stacked on top of a fixed cost line. Um, what formula can we use? And this is a question about some, this is the answer to this question. You learned this in high school probably, Lane. What formula can we use to describe this line on an XY plane?
Lane. You are Lane. Oh, you're, you're asking me. Yes, I am asking you. I am asking you. Um, just like what formula? Yeah, what formula? Well, you don't have to be 100% sure to provide me with a possible answer, and maybe even the correct answer. I don't really know. Do you know? Sir? You, you're, you look like a man in the know. I mean, yeah, he, I, mean, I mean, you should maybe write this on the beach. Slope-intercept form. That's not a formula. I, I need a formula, sir. Y equals mx plus c. Have you ever heard of that before? Yeah, I've heard of that before. Have yeah. you heard of that before? Then you did know. Say, have you heard of y equals mx plus b? Does this mean yes or no? Yeah? Y equals mx plus b. We can use that to describe any line on an xy plane. Can we not? So here, let's do that again. Y equals mx plus b. Did anybody use y equals a plus bx? You can see they're the same thing. They're functionally the same thing. It's just there's a, minor, a small minority of people who are taught it this way. The vast majority of people are taught it this way. So that's the one we're going to talk about today. And so what we want to talk about then is every letter, Y, M, X, and B, we want to replace those with an accounting version, with an accounting version. Hermes, get us started. Y, M, X, B. You've seen this formula before? Yeah, and so terms that we've talked about today, we can replace Y, M, X, and B with terms that we've learned today that are accounting terms. That's a good yeah, question, isn't it? Be, uh, for example, you could say variable cost, <laughs> or no, money equals, I mean, dollars, or yeah, whatever, uh, revenue, profit, however you want to call it, equals. Okay, and I'm blanking. So y is y is actually total cost. Y is total cost. Okay. It would be the yes, it would be the dependent variable. It would be the dependent variable. Cam's not here. Say another one, please. The B is fixed cost. Very good. Very, very good. Olivia. Take a sip. You can take a sip of energy drink. You going to help them out? More precisely, it is variable cost per unit. Variable cost per unit. What is X then, Olivia? Olivia, what's X? Huh? What was the very first word you said? What per unit? What per unit? No, it's not, it's not cost per unit. Stella already gave an answer. Carson's not here. Emma, back to you already. There's a lot of people missing today, unfortunately. You can get mad at them. You kind of kind of give them give them the give them dirty eye, you know, next semester. Our next not class period. What would be what would X be? Do you do you know which which is the x axis on the graph? Which one? 
And what's it labeled? Volume. That's what X is. Yeah. Volume. And so and I'm actually going to leave it as X. But, but X is volume. It's the X axis. Okay? So now, questions, comments, concerns, random thoughts. So now we can do this. I can give you this information. Watch this. This is going to be exciting. You're going to have 38 units. Total cost equals 21750 Fixed cost equals $17,000. Variable cost per unit equals what? On your market set, go. Make sure this is on camera. There we are. Look over there. Should be able to read that. Viewing audience might need to zoom in a little bit. That's very important. You want me to give you, I don't know, 125 pencils or $125? Anything. <laughs> Pardon? Is it the user friendly part? Also? Yes, of course. Just not my exam. Did you get it? Getting close? Yeah. And actually, um, the M I've gave it, given you, right? Oh, no, no, M is the only thing, but I've given you X, actually. Mm -hmm. Yes, because otherwise you can't solve it. How you guys doing? Should have a dollar sign. Very good, good man. You get it? Very good. Very, very good. So have you been to Hilton Head? You've been to Hilton Head? Should be $125. Yeah. My wife and I spent a night there once. Yeah, yeah. A year ago in the summer, about a year and a half ago. Super beautiful. That is incredibly wrong. Is it? Yes. Huh. Like, really, really wrong. I, I, I'm looking to see what you did, because you're missing, you, you're missing your, um, you're missing a piece of information, because I give you X. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're off by. Divide that by 38, and then you get the right answer. What'd you get? That should be 125 dollars. How are you doing? You, that's set up right. You know, just solve for X. Getting close. You don't have a calculator. This is an accounting class. You got a phone? Uh, it doesn't have a charge. It doesn't have a charge. You're just having a really bad day. Yeah, the battery is dead. Okay. What do you got here, bro? I don't see nothing. What's the answer? That's the answer? How do you know that's the answer? Like, you look at that. I just see a bunch of random numbers that are unlabeled. How do you know that is the answer? Yeah, but why don't you write a little more so that you can go home tonight, take, have a good night's sleep, and get up in the morning and be able to know what you did. That's, that's your goal when you're taking notes, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's, what you, that's beautiful, okay? How are we doing? So it looks good, looks really good. Awesome, everybody. Awesome, everybody. Where's your dollar sign, sir? It's a dollar, right? Variable cost is a dollar, so label dollars, dollars. Very good, everybody, okay? So that is $125, $125, okay. 
Um, what am I going to do here? I think, I think I'm going to let you go, if that's okay. Is that okay? What, sir? Well, no, ask me now. Because well, the, the thing is, is you might not be the only one in the room with this question, and then, and then that's really bad. I think I just plugged in wrong. Oh, you, got it. you didn't get it? I can show you how to get yeah. the right answer. So is everybody good? You okay? Are you okay? Are you mad at me if I let you go early? No? Don't you think you should be? Like, I'm cheating you. Not giving you your money's worth. <laughs> Olivia's like, oh, no, I'm ready to go. Yes, you can go, but you're not, you're not grumpy about that? Okay. Thanks for the time you did give. <laughs> you're very welcome. You're very welcome. Have a, have a good day, everybody. Don't forget all this stuff. We're going to do some more on Thursday. Oh! Do you, does anybody want to see their exam? If you want to see your exam, please stay. If you don't care or haven't taken it yet, please go. Okay. And uh, let me turn this yeah. off first. Uh, Dr. Yes, sir.